Hey, they gave me a shirt. Nice. You want to start working with wood products on your Thunder Nova Plus? I'll share a few tips and ideas for you today on Laser Nug. Welcome back to the channel today. Can you tell me what all of these various different species of wood, including plywoods, have in common? They all have what I call a natural resin in them. It's natural, it's organic. It's not that obvious to you until you start to do deep or deeper engravings because it doesn't show up, but it will. You're starting to get used to your Nova Plus and you're working with wood. And I know a lot of you love to work with wood so you know this because in fact, many of your YouTube names have wood or something to do with wood in the name. And you've probably started out like I did. You start doing these almost what I'd call marking or very surface engraves on your wood products. In fact, you'd almost call them marking the wood as opposed to engraving it because you're not really getting any depth. And some of them, you can't even feel an engrave. You've basically colored the wood. And what you might get out of that is a little bit of dust, maybe a little bit of soot that you wipe off. You seldom at this level have to sand it because you don't want to sand it because you'll sand your engrave off. But now you want to go further. You want really nice deep engraves like this. Beautiful chocolate brown, about a sixteenth of an inch into the wood and something you haven't seen yet starts showing up. It's resin. It kind of looks a little bit like this. Kind of shiny after you've pulled it out of the laser and in addition to having your debris or your soot, you're getting this really hard, and I mean hard, substance that's very difficult to sand off. And in fact, if you're sanding it, you're most likely starting to sand or sand into your engrave to try to get it out of the surface grain of the wood. So let's talk a little further about that. I'm going to show you what it looks like and I'm going to show you what I do to get away from it, as well as answer a few other questions about painting and staining wood that you want to laser engrave. Let's go. So we're just going to start quickly in Lightburn. I've just created a simple test file here, a little bit of a design. It's going to engrave the lettering as well as my little picture of this fox. And I'm just going to do a score line around it. I'm going to jump into my material library, go to Maple, and you'll see here, I've already started creating different engraved settings, whether it's a dark engrave, kind of a medium or a light. We're going to start with our dark engrave. I'm going to come up here to my black layer. I'm going to assign that. For my line layer, I don't have a score setting yet, so we'll just assign the cut. And let's go into that and yeah, let's drop that way down. Let me go, oh, let's go 100 millimeters a second. Let's do 20% power. Okay, air assist is on, one pass line mode. That should probably give me a good score line. We have our settings in. Before you send it to your laser, always make sure you've grouped everything okay. And I always check with the preview just to make sure I haven't missed anything when I group these together. I didn't. We're in good shape. I'm gonna fire up the laser and then we'll send the file over. Okay, Nova Plus is fired up. We're going to be using a test piece on silver maple today. This is most likely the type you're using if you're buying premium wood for crafting or hobbying or making signs, designs, those kind of things. I'm going to drop it in, always autofocus first, and you're always going to zero out your air and test your air before you start. I always calibrate my air to zero before I begin, and then I test my high and low air pressures, make sure I'm getting a more accurate reading, if you're not sure how to do this, there are two gray buttons on the left and the right here, little ones. You're going to press them simultaneously until you see it zero. It usually takes a half a second. Here we go. Okay. I'm pretty much zeroed out, but you'll notice I accidentally pressed one longer than the other. So I'm just going to bring this back to 0 0.3 as my alarm air pressure, or basically my safe default air pressure for the alarm on the system. And we're just going to test my low air pressure here, make sure that I'm above 0 0.3. And for my engraves, usually I like to do about 0 0.4, 0 0.5. I think that's looking pretty good. And I'll test that higher as well. Get her up a little bit higher. Just a quick aside, that little number on your air display is a very important number. That's the default minimum pressure that you should have running on your Nova Plus. 0.3 is the setting 
that will trigger the safety feature on your Nova Plus should your air pressure fall below it it'll literally stop in the middle of an engrave. It's meant to ensure that you've got enough airflow through the head to make sure that your lens stays cool. So always make sure that you've adjusted your air pressure above that 0.3 and you check it once in a while to make sure it's staying above 0.3. Let's get back. So my silver maple is in. I've done my autofocus. I've loaded my file, set my origin. I framed it to make sure it fits on the piece. I've zeroed out my air pressure. I've checked my low air pressure setting to make sure it's sufficient. I think we're ready to run the job. If you're interested, the settings I'm going to be using for my silver maple today is 800 millimeters per second at 70 max and min power. It's an engrave or a fill layer, so I'm not going to use my high air. I'm going to use the low air setting on my Nova Plus. And I'm going to do it at about 1,200 lines per inch. Yep, that's right, 1,200. So, I got my beautiful chocolate brown deep engrave. It's about a sixteenth of an inch in. But you notice how shiny it is? It looks a little different than your surface engraves, right? That's the natural resins in the wood. I'm going to try to tilt this into the light so you can see the glimmer. What's worse? Uh, Hear that? It's sticky. It's resin. And every second that I hold it here out of the laser, that resin is beginning to harden again. And it'll become really hard and very difficult to sand. Because unlike these more or less surface engraves or really, really shallow engraves where all you had was a little bit of dust or a little bit of that soot or debris that you could easily sand off in 20, 30 seconds, now you have a bit of work ahead of you because that resin is really hard to sand no matter what grit you use. What's worse is when you keep sanding at it and trying to get not only the debris out of that wood grain, but trying to sand that resin off of your engrave, what started off looking like this ends up looking like that because you've had to sand it so much and sand so much of that surface off, you start to impact your engrave. It's difficult to get the resin out once it's hardened. So how do I combat it? I mask my wood. That's right. This is paper transfer tape. It's not masking tape. And I'd highly recommend you get some. It's not expensive, although some folks have mentioned that it is. I've got this six by 100 foot roll for $20 Canadian. And it lasts a long, long time. Let's do that same piece, but let's mask it first. Same design, take two. Another suggestion I'd offer is not to buy your woods from various different places. In other words, don't buy your plywoods, for example, from three different places because you're gonna end up with three different grades or different quality or levels of quality of wood. They're all different. Some carry commercial, some carry both commercial and construction grades, some will carry hobby grade. And what you're going to find is if you're using different types of plywoods or real woods from different suppliers, your settings that work well on one may not work well on the other. For example, with plywoods, you may find that a lower quality will have more gaps, not as properly or consistently glued between the plies, and that's going to affect the outcome of your engrave. Here in Ontario, I use KJP Select Hardwoods. They have excellent, high, consistent quality. Every time I order the same type of wood, it engraves the exact same every time. Something to consider as you go forward. Let's take a look. Looks the same. Difference is, all of your sticky resins are on your paper mask. Let's peel it off. And this is probably my biggest tip on this video today. That's about 10 cents worth of paper mask. 
if it had been a really large, more complex engraved with a lot of tiny pieces to pick out, all I'd do, I'd take my water spray bottle, I'd spray the piece on top of the mask, give it about 20, 30 seconds, and I'd use a dry cloth and just wipe. The glue on the mask will give very instantly. It's not like masking tape. It's a different type of glue. And all you've got to do is wipe back and forth and all those tiny little pieces will come right out and wipe off. So you don't have to sit there and pick for a long period of time on the bigger engraves. But on a simple engrave like this, I just had a couple of letters that I had to pick out. GP, I love the chocolate brown, but my customer wants a lighter engrave, a lighter color. Well, speed and power will stay the same. All you have to do is change your LPI. Let me show you. That was 1200 DPI. That was 800 DPI. And that was at 500 DPI. Same speed and power. All of these were masked. So I hope that part was helpful for you. Like me, probably a lot of you like to see to believe. It's just a lot easier if you take the time and demonstrate it to you than for me to just tell you what I've learned over the last two years. But let's get on to part two here. I get this question a lot. Many of you work with wood, you like to stain wood, you like to paint wood, and that question comes up, can I paint the wood and then engrave it? Because if you engrave it first and then try to stain the wood or paint it, you're you know, at the risk of stating the obvious, you're gonna get your paint or your stain into your engrave. You really wanna maintain that coloring in that engrave. So, let's grab some maple plywood. This side here I painted with Rust-Oleum. It's got a primer coat and it has three coats of Rust-Oleum white. It's a glossy white. On this side of the maple plywood, I've stained it with a linen, a white linen stain. Let's get it in the laser and run the exact same tests. Let's do our painted surface first. Well, water in a rag. Now let's try the other side with the stain. So your painted side, this is a glossy Rust-Oleum two times, gives a nice glossy shiny finish and that cleaned up, no mask required, it was just water and a rag, that's it. On the side that I stained, the top quite obviously had no mask on it, the bottom was masked. So let's wrap this up. You're starting to get into deeper and deeper engraves, the surface engraves are nice and they have their place but I think you'll find that a deeper, nicer colored engrave always produces a better product, at least in my opinion. You don't have to use, you know, a bleach and water mixture or a borax and water mixture with your Nova Plus. If you need a deeper, darker color, you can get it. The machine will do it for you. You just have to keep your speed and your power the same, change your LPI. And we've also tested and proven that it's okay to paint or stain your wood product before you put it in the laser without impacting that finish or the work you've done to that wood piece and you're going to get a nice beautiful engrave even through the paint or the stain. Mask, I, I'd encourage you to start using paper mask whether you're painting, staining or you're engraving on raw wood. It just helps to maintain or manage that resin that you're activating or you're liquefying out of the natural woods. It's just really difficult to sand off without impacting that beautiful engrave you just did. And it's a very very inexpensive product. I believe the correct name for it is transfer tape paper or paper transfer tape. They also make a vinyl transfer tape and you don't want that one. So hey, I hope there was a few helpful tips in there, especially as you're starting to get out and get used to your Nova Plus. Thanks for sticking around today. Have fun with that laser and please be kind to each other. I'm Gord Potter and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers. <laughs>